big 8 o'clock hour. In fact, walking around the halls right now, a man that came in second for the public advocate race, lost to Jamani Williams on Tuesday, but maybe mayor is in his future. Eric Orich will join us at about 8.30, but as he dances to 10th Avenue, breeze out from Bruce Springsteen, World famous <laughs> defense Woo! attorney, Arthur I. Donald. It's funny. Bruce in the house. We walked out uh, last week. We walked in, I should say. Bernie and I were doing the Brian Kilmeade show last week. And right uh, right when we went on, it was right after Senator Lindsey Graham walked out. And, and there's a nice picture of me, Bernie, and Lindsey Graham on my Twitter account, at Sid Rosenberg and our Facebook account. And who took the picture? The guy that was on before. That's Lindsay, right. Bernie, and Sid, the great author, I Dollar. Thank you, Mo. Oh, hey. Let me tell you, I was following in my grandfather's footsteps taking that picture because my grandfather, Artie Idala, was the inquiring photographer for a newspaper here in New York called The Daily Mirror back in the 50s Is that and the true? 60s. Yeah, I yeah. know that paper. He had his own... Uh, he had his own column. You said it by Artie Idala. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, I am, as a consumer of radio, I just want to say, and, and I hope the uh, WABC bosses are listening, I am so happy that Kill Me follows you guys. You are. Yeah, it's yes. I think he's great. I think he's fantastic. Are you trying to get back on the show again or something? No, no, no. I know, I know <laughs> Brian for fifteen years. You know, you know Brian. Brian's a great <laughs> no, guy. No, he is. The kill me that I die. The kill me that I die. show. Brian's got. It, it's just I'm very happy because you know when you guys would were at would end. There was a little bit of a, a lag right after, sure. but now right. Brian, yeah. he's, he he brings it. Let's lay our cards on the table, okay? Which cards? We got cards. You're one of the great attorneys in the country today. I'm being serious. I'm not. Now, yes, Danielle, my wife is great. Joe Tacopina is great. Jose Baez is great. You're uh, you're in that. You're you're one of the best attorneys in the country. You've got huge cases every day at the biggest district courts and criminal courts in the whole country. But you would give it all up in a heartbeat to get a full time TV and or no. radio job. No, 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 no. no, no. no Listen, way. you're yeah. on the stand. You are committing perjury now. Why, why, why You're you? swearing on the Bible. You like okay. you like the camera, though. You do. You, oh, you, I you've been on Fox News for <laughs> many years. On. Me and my brother, right? My brother, my bold, my fellow bold white, more white brother. <laughs> we learned how fast that business can change. Roger Ailes was on the cover of Media Magazine as the most powerful man mm-hmm. in media, and 16 days after that lawsuit was filed, he was. Bernie, you know they they erased every image of him. I know from the empire that he created, expunged, expunged. And I will tell you, here's the truth, the whole truth, and, and he nothing was dead but the within truth. a year, under oath. Yep. When I got my Fox News contract in 2005, retroactive to 2004, and it was a great 12 year run. Three people: Justice Antonin Scalia, the great Geraldo Rivera, and the greatest of all of them, my father, Louis Idala. All said to me, never forget one thing, you're a lawyer first. first. Right. And Geraldo said, what makes you valuable on TV and radio is because you're a real lawyer. You're not a, a guy talking about cases 10 years ago. And Scalia said to me, listen to me, kid. He goes, it's only a matter of time until some other better looking guy with a full head of hair walks in no, and you're on. out the door. Oh, yeah. He goes, today a peacock. Tomorrow a feather dust. That's, that's a good. So, that's great. Good so advice. that is good why, I, I, and, and I love being a lawyer. And by the I way, really love being a lawyer. If in fact Michael Cohen had gotten the same advice from those three people, which is be a lawyer first, he wouldn't be in the trouble You're he's in today. Sid, I was listening to you guys earlier, and and. and I think we're all kind of in the same ballpark. Like he did bad things, but he's still a human being, and you felt bad for him. And there was a simple. And I know him kind of the way you do. Like transcend. Like I've met him. I've been in his I've, office. I've been when, on, on TV panels with him. I was in his office when he was working for Trump. Before it was candidate right. Trump. I mean, he literally sat on the other side of the wall. Here's the difference. You know those three people I just named: yes. Haralo and Scalia, my dad. I have been blessed with having role models who have instilled in me a sense of integrity and ethics. The late district attorney, Joe Hines, um, Jiminy Cricket. Do we, do everyone knows who Jiminy Cricket is from Pinocchio. Sure. Always let your conscience be your guide. My father would, used to wear a little lapel pin of Jiminy Cricket. People are like, why you got a green cricket on your lapel? Because as a judge said, the Honorable Bill Mastro, when he swore in a, a class of, of lawyers, like your wife Danielle got sworn in, but his son happened to be in that class, and I'll never forget what he said. When you're a lawyer, you're going to meet so, there's going to be so many times when there are crossroads, and you're going to have the opportunity to take the high road or the low road. And it may be, it may be more of a draw of magnetism to take the low road. 
He goes, but son, always take the high road and you'll be so pleasantly surprised of the people you meet along the way. And, and, and I keep that in the front of my mind. And I know that money must have been a tremendous temptation for Michael Cohen. And the fame and the glamour must have been a tremendous t- temptation. But you got to have that little Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder saying, is it all going to be worth it That's right. when it all comes crumbling down? Yo, that is deep right there, yeah. Arthur right But now. it's the truth. The whole of course thing. And, it's and the I truth. do want to, I just, it's nothing, another topic that you guys tackled that was so topical with, with uh, Newt Gingrich, who's But fantastic. just one more thing on sure. Cohen. The irony of him now facing charges again. I know. For, it's, it's, per, for lying to Congress. It's a sad day. It's, day. Right, it's right up there with, with Kavanaugh and Ford. And I mean... I think the rest of the world is almost laughing at us. Like, like uh, enough with this. Really? Like, like, move. They were much bigger. How many millions of kids go to, go to bed hungry in America? And we're worried about Michael Cohen's opinion of the president after he's a, a convicted liar. I mean, that was just a show. Look, the thing spectacle. that they did behind closed doors, if they felt that that was necessary yesterday, I have no problem with that. But to make a national spectacle all day long... To what end? To, to, right. to what end? Right. Just to right. disgrace a, another human being. Well, before you get to the new Gingrich stuff, we do have Eric Ulrich coming up live in studio at 8.30 pod. Let's take a quick break. To him. He, he's, he did great. Came in second place. Did great. Uh, let's take a quick break. Give Arthur a full new segment coming up. I want talk to talk about, about mental Gingrich. health. Mental health, great. Mental health. Okay, we'll take a short break. More with Bame Defense Attorney, our great buddy and a great radio guest, Arthur Idala, right after these words. Bernie and Sid in the morning. Joseph Abu checks in. Not only is Arthur Idala a brilliant lawyer and a great guest, he's on my best dressed list. <laughs> and what's funny is he can't see you right now, but you look gorgeous this morning. Well, gorgeous. thank you, honey. Always. I actually have a, a shout out to my wife. We had a great date last night. We went and uh, we went and saw the pretty pretty woman on Broadway. Oh, you did. Which you know, if you know the movie, it's 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 just fun Was at the good? end. They, yeah, at the yeah. end, they get everyone up and stand, you know, clapping, right. and you know, it's a happy ending. Right. Then we went to happy, happy ending. ending. Was that for you or for the, uh, the uh, show? Easy, yeah, easy, it, was, yeah it, was, easy. it was for the Patriots. Uh, I feel like he copies me. I took you. Daniel to see to kill a mockingbird on Sunday. You did. And now Artie is going to see pretty no, woman. Was he great? Everyone's telling me I should go. It yeah, was fantastic. Lawyer, Jeff Daniels, even though he's blonde, and Gregory Peck had jet black hair, yeah. got a little weird, but Jeff Daniels was great. The play is great. Okay, great. I will go see that. And then we went to eat uh, sushi at Bluefin, and then we oh. took a, a fast uh, a fast ride home, and uh, my wife got a little frisky. I mean, oh. It was nice. nice. She knew, she wait, knew wait, I had to wait, wake wait. up early to come and hang out with you guys, but I think you know, she was not taking no for little, an answer. A little bit of uh, too much information. I, I, said, I think frisky. I think frisky is all right. Okay, okay. I mean, I think frisky is. So there there was a happy end. Frisky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm in a very good mood. But I, but I was listening to you guys this morning, and I was listening to Newt Gingrich and said what you said about gun control uh, in the country. Look. I came into the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office the year before Rudy Giuliani became mayor. I want to say that that year was the highest murder rate in the city of New York, but some of that had to do with the Happy Land fire. Remember, like, oh, 89? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, right. Um, a right. bunch of people up, up in the died. Bronx, yeah. Right, and so the, that was all considered homicide, so it kind of bu- bumped up the numbers. But there were guns everywhere. I mean, Brooklyn, the Fulton Mall, they were taking out what were called Tech 9 machine guns, which they were impossible to aim. They were just, like, spraying uh, areas. And and between Giuliani and Bloomberg, I call them the dynamic duo. I mean, guns in New York drop precipitously, and it would be ignorant to say that doesn't have anything to do with crime. But you guys spoke about mental health. And I'm leaving here today to go to the Brooklyn Supreme Court, uh, and I have a case, and it's the um, one of the rare times in, in a lawyer's career where a guy who clearly did, does a murder, there's no doubt about it, is going to take a plea of not acceptable by reason of mental disease or defect. Um, I've handled really a lot, a lot of murder cases, and this is the only the second time in my 26 years that this has happened. And, and it's a former police officer who had a normal career, retired, gets to keep his gun, and his the way someone could break an arm or break a leg, he broke his brain. And he was under the impression that this landlord, who was a regular guy, a hardworking guy, who had a, a small three-family house, the landlord was spying on him, and he was looking at him. And then uh, my client has a, a granddaughter, and he was looking at his granddaughter, and he was coming through the TV, and he was trying to guess him, and the police were involved. And one day he drops his granddaughter off at school, he comes in, and the poor landlord, the guy's 45 years old, is throwing out his recycling, and just looks at the client and says... 
hey, what's up? And he goes, I'll tell you what's up. And he shoots him right in the head, right there, oh, right God. in front of him. It was all over the yeah. newspaper when it happened. Yeah. So now the prosecutors have decided, instead of just throwing him into a jail, they, I mean, the guy is, to this day, is just, he doesn't know reality. He's just out of touch with reality. They're putting him in a hospital where he'll stay. Statistically speaking, you are confined longer when you take a plea to mental disease or defect than if you plead guilty to murder. And murder, you do about right. 20 to 25 years. So people are like, oh, he's getting off. Well, let's see. Instead of being in, uh, in, in prison for 20, 25 years, he's going to be confined in a hospital, and he's 60 years old for 30 years. But the uh, sad part about it and is... And it's not a hospital that we're used to going to, like Cornell or NYU. It's a very it, it different type of hospital. probably could have been prevented. That's the Correct. thing. Now, Absolutely. And that's to the story that I brought up earlier, is that uh, the mayor's wife, the Blue, uh, de Blasio himself, squandered $773 million on a school program he just shut it down a total waste of money she spent she his wife shirley mccray i read the newspaper spent 900 million dollars on this mental health program called thrive new york city and uh, they were afraid to stoke stigma by by actually acknowledging the threat and the severity that uh, a mental mental illness poses uh when not receiving th uh, treatment these people become violent that's the problem. They didn't want to say that. They don't want to right. actually address it. Well, some of them become violent, but, like the case so they're talking about. This is what they did. <laughs> I know. They do. That's what I'm saying. So she, she wasted it. They did the stress reduction for these mentally uh, ill people through things like yoga, line dancing, drumming, and soul chi, and equine facilitated psychotherapy. In other words, yeah, horses. Horses. Well, I mean, that my this friend is Anthony nonsense. Weiner uh, actually did some equine therapy when he. Uh, when he went up well, to the Well, you're paying taxpayer money for these guys rocking <laughs> no, back and forth on uh, 7th Avenue and Penn Station, and they're talking to themselves. I don't think equine therapy is exactly... Uh, Obviously, it or, needs or to be... Or line dancing. The bottom line is it needs to be medicine. And here's the, the real constitutional issue. Can a police officer... Pull someone who is very obviously, by a reasonable person's standard, pull them off the street, put them to a hospital, and then, Sid, are you okay with a doctor who does an analysis sticking a needle in that person's arm against their will, but that will give them medicine that will put their brain back into the normal no, cycle? No, of course I'm not. So, you, you, so, in other words, you can't forcibly medicate someone... No, of course not. ...who is too mentally deranged to make a decision for themselves. Correct. Now, you okay. can incarcerate somebody, but you can't forcibly But, but think somebody. about it. It's okay to put them it, in Rikers it, it, Island, yes, which is a... It is. No, <laughs> if, they're if, if they're mentally incapacitated, right. I think a doctor should be able to make that decision and, and, and go ahead and do that. I, if they're mentally incapacitated. I, I concur with you. Even though if you read the Constitution and you, no, you, you, you breathe that. and live right, the Constitution right. in our freedoms, yes. it doesn't seem right. But you're not talking about a reasonable person standard. If it's a reasonable person who's just PO'd because they're Jewish and not Italian and going to poly prep, yes, you should stick a needle in their arm. <laughs> right. That's a I, shot. I, I'm not, not, not going to stick a needle <laughs> you, in your you, arm. You, you, you think I know you wanted to be Danny Fagliano, uh, of but course it's all I right. Do. I know, really, Gary Hanna. Uh, who, who is Lebanese, by the way? I uh, know he He's is. He's not Italian. Don't worry. But he owned pastels as father. His father owned right. pastels. He's a um, wannabe, too. Yeah, he is. A hundred percent. But you got to get a second opinion, then, at least. Right? Of course. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, then maybe I, then. Okay. I was just involved with a case in the last two weeks. Real quick. It was a young man. And you guys are going to blow your mind. Doing very, very well in a local university. I don't, I don't want to reveal the room, but a high-end university. Very well. And he signed up for the Trump campaign. And he went all in on the Trump campaign, and he was 100% ostracized by all of his friends and, and everyone around him in campus. I mean, they wouldn't go near the kid. And so he winds up graduating. He works on the campaign. He's got pictures with the president and everything. And he graduates, and he's just all alone. He's mm -hmm. like in solitary confinement. Wow. He's not from this country. He's legally uh. here. And his parents called me from the foreign country. We, we heard you could help us. The bottom line is we had to go in. The police broke down the door, took him. Brought him to the hospital. Now his parents were there, and they got some medication into his system, and he's coming back into reality. But there was a period of time where he lost touch with oh, what boy. was going How on. About that. Now we uh, we'll talk to Eric Ulrich in about five minutes. But Bernie's talking about Bill De Blasio and his wife, which would have been perfect for Eric. If in fact he was the public advocate, the watchdog exactly. of the mayor. Yes. But now Jumani Williams has that job. Um, you know, I remember after the OJ trials, F. Lee Bailey was disbarred. And uh, Michael Cohen, a couple of days ago, was disbarred. So, and I don't know the answer to this. He's disbarred for life, right? I mean, he can't. Or, or is he? What, what, what think, is the answer? I actually, I think in New York, I don't think you're ever disbarred for life. I think after seven years, you could go in front of the appellate division and you could apply. Even so if you're a convicted felon? Yeah. 
I got a guy, a license back, who was, uh, no, I'm sorry, a guy committed murder, Oof. Convict, convicted of murder, in college, in jail, went to college, went to law school, came out, took the bar, passed the bar, and it took three times in front of the appellate division, but the judge who convicted him wrote a letter, the, ju- the jurors wrote a letter, and the prosecutors wrote a letter saying, look, this kid was 17 years old, on drugs when he killed the drug dealer. Right. And now he's 35 years old. Half his life has passed. He's been rehabilitated. You should let him be a lawyer. And he's a lawyer. He's what about, currently okay, practicing. But that's different. He, he, cool he, he became a lawyer, but for somebody yes. who had it taken away from yeah. them. I think, that's legal, be more I think difficult. legally you can get it back. But yes, it's not, it's not common. It is not typical. Well, if you were Michael Cohen's attorney in seven years, eight years, ten years, whatever it is, and you were presenting a case to the judge that this man should be allowed to practice law again. What do you think would be a reasonable defense? <laughs> no, I mean, it's impossible, that is a, right? That's a, that is a rough one. I think Michael Cohen's future is in books. Yep. I mean, they asked him, do you swear you're not going to make wh- any money from books? Which, no, I can't. Which swear. partially explains why he did what he did on Wednesday. 100% public speaking, right? Yes. He'll, he'll wind up getting at least 25, 50 grand a pop. To go speak to whatever it is. He needed to ingratiate himself with that half of uh, the country that hates the president, so he can successfully he, he, sell a book. I, absolutely, and and I do think there's, you know, it's amazing because I do know this guy, and like he's going to be part of American history forever. Yeah, Michael Cohen is yeah, the yeah. way the guys from Watergate are. I mean, you know, it's just like. Wow, you know, they're going to jail, and, I, and I'm like, well, I, you know, I was sat what, in this what, guy's office. What about what the Giovanni Gambino said that uh, he better watch his back in prison because people don't like rats? Yeah, but you is know that, what? Uh, now valid the way not? the way our system is, everyone's a rat now, especially in the federal system. Yeah, but he I says mean, he might end up like Whitey Bulger. You could be a rat, but then when, when well, you're in Whitey, prison, yeah. But the thing the, is, Whitey Bulger was cooperating against guys who were of that element. Uh, Michael Cohen is cooperating against a bunch of white collar guys. Right, so, Gambino's trying to say us Trump supporters. No, they're yeah. not going to take it that personal. No, I, right. I agree. And you know the funny part is, is that my, where Michael Cohen's going. It, look, to be away from your family is horrible. When I've toured jails and I've interviewed inmates just to figure out what's going on, I say to them, "What's the bur- worst part about being in prison?" And unanimously, said they say the same answer not being able to leave. So then I follow up. I go, okay. I go, besides the fact of not being able to leave, I go, what's the worst part? Is it the food? Is it where you sleep? Is they, they unanimously not being able to leave. They're like, you don't understand. Oh, hold on, hold on. You get to you're, make you're choices. Tell me that nobody, you get to go here. You no, get to go there. But, but nobody brought up the broomstick in the rectum? Is that oh, fun? No. I, that, that, they all say the worst part is I'm representing a guy right now in a white collar case from from Rome. <laughs> he just did he just did time in Rome and now he got transferred here and he's right here in Lower Manhattan, the MCC. And I said to him yesterday, two days ago, I go, uh, now, let's say his name is Giovanni. Giovanni, gay la differenza de la incarcerare qui and incarcerare a Roma. Hey. What's the difference between being in jail here and being in jail in Rome? He goes, Arturo, a Roma è come cinque stelle albergo. Rome jails is like a five star hotel. Is that right? Compared to here. Oh, that's funny. He goes, it's marble on the inside. Really? Of course, the jail's 2,000 years old. Right. He goes, it's marble on the inside. There's moldings around. He goes, the food is like, it's like, you know, Christmas Eve. Oh, your family can bring you food. Well, Your wife think could, could and by the way, you it, Italy must food. be the exception because American jails are much better than most oh, countries, that, yes. most of the world. Not Italy. But and Italy's way, soft. Talking you know. about Italy, how about Amanda Knox pulling a Robert Chambers and making fun of the murderers on Instagram? Well, that's stupid. I mean, how stupid? But she can't be tried again. And uh, talking about being away from home, our good friend Craig Carton was supposed to be sentenced uh, yesterday. And they've now pushed it to March 15th. Well, his lawyer's on trial. I bet you that had a yeah. March. Oh, just really two weeks. He's furious. Ago. He's like, come on, man. I want to get this. I want to get my life started again. Let's get this done. Well, his lawyer's in the middle of a heavy murder case in Manhattan. Did you read about the one where the juror fainted two days ago right. looking yes, at the yes. autopsy pictures? That's um, that's oh, Carson's that attorney, right? that's Robert Gottlieb. Great lawyer. That's probably why he's waiting. Anyway, Not um, as great as the Bernie and Sid show. <laughs> Thank Not you. As or, or, great or as, as great a lawyer as Arthur no, 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 the best. No, Gottlieb is great. But you guys are doing well. You're hitting it out of the park. Thank and I'm you. I'm very proud to be affiliated with the three of you. My Even man. Jill, who when my wife saw a picture of her and I together, goes, 
Is she married? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and, she was, and why do you call her Flipper? Right. Uh, does okay. that have any uh, meaning? Huh? I go, I have no idea why we call her Flipper. Uh, well, well, no, how about Flirty Flipper? Uh, no, an- that's, don't, I don't tell your wife. The, I, I said Frank Morano told me to call right. her Right. The, okay. the answer to that question, by the way, is it depends on what day of the week. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll take a short break when we get back. Thank you you came in second for public advocate. Congratulations we'll to Thank him. You. He's great. Will Mayor be next? We'll talk to Eric Ulrich right after these words. Thank you.